everyone, my name is Optimus Prime, and I'm joined by my illustrious co-host, Primetime Moth. And whether you're watching us or indeed listening to us, we welcome you to our weekly show, Transformers 84 to 24, 40 years of rolling out. In the year of the Transformers brand's 40th anniversary, we look back at the vast history of the Transformers. If you're new to the show, we'll be covering each year of the franchise in its own weekly episode with special episodes throughout the year. So please like, subscribe and turn on your notifications to ensure you do not miss anything on this incredible journey. And now we move to 1998, the second year, third year of the Beast Wars. Moff, how are you doing? I am very well and very excited about talking about this year of Transformers and specifically the Wars of the Beasts. It is it's a fun period of time to be talking about. I, I, we've, we've already had two weeks worth of uh, uh, talking about this already, but uh, it, it's so weird because I always think of myself as more of a G1er. But since we've been talking about Beast Wars, I see, I, I feel so much more excited about it. Uh, maybe because it's slightly fresher, but um, I don't know. It was a really interesting time for the brand. Uh, and this year we get that old uh, uh, trope from Transformers, which is. Take your your concept and give it more gimmicks. <laughs> because, yes, that's a very, very Transformers thing to do. Um, and I think, actually, in this particular case with the Beast Wars stuff, they, they did it really, really, really well. But we'll get on to that when we get to toys. So let's have a quick look at what was going on in 1998. What was going on in 1998, Moff? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think actually before we get into that your point there around considering yourself a G1R and, and how you feel about this and, uh, and you know I absolutely consider myself a G1 pair and that's my focus that's probably 90% of my collection is G1 you know my collection goal when I think about it is about G1 but I have such a fondness for this period and I think it's because it's the first time I would say I was an adult collector or not even an adult, I was only 18, um, but I was a collector of toys rather than, you know, as a kid, I just got whatever Santa brought me or my parents brought me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I didn't, I, I, we would get to pick our main present, um, but over and above that, we just got whatever came. Whereas this is the first time period where I really started to collect things, you know, uh, at, at this point, it was kind of Power of Force and then the Transmetals were a toy that just captivated me um to a, a level that i don't think i've ever really had since and i think also you know nowadays you buy your toys you do the wonderful thing of going to wonderful websites like printingtoys.co.uk um uh, easy plug um but you're buying your toys online it's not the same as back at this point i was hunting down the toys by going to Toys R Us and you know there's a lot more toy shops on the the high street and I was in university in Glasgow able to go to real toy shops and see what I could pick up and I think that's probably why I have such a fondness for it A the toys are outstanding B the cartoon is fantastic but C the experience of collecting the Transmetal stuff and Beast Wars was such a pleasure and is probably what I would love Transformer collecting to be like more now you know the, the, the highlight for me recent years has been going to toy fairs and going to real shops and picking things up the online isn't quite the same vibe so I think that's why I kind of look back at this period being such a highlight yeah no I I yeah. 100% agree with you on that one. Um, I distinctly remember this period of time very, very fondly because, as you say, I hadn't tweaked. Uh, it was Power of the Force. It was uh, next year you got the Phantom Menace. Actually, I think probably the end of this year, beginning of next year anyway, uh, the Phantom Menace toys. And, and buying Star Wars figures at that time was a really, really big thing, thing for me as well. So I was mm -hmm. sort of uh, uh, switching between... Uh, uh, Transformers and and Star Wars and Beast Wars was it was still there and it was something I was very interested in getting and I'll talk a few uh, more about uh, some of the figures I got at the time 
uh, uh, later. But uh, yeah, it was it was just so nice going into toy shops and actually hunting for different things and knowing things you wanted to get and going through all the shelves and stuff like that. And these days, where the, everything, the whole focus on collecting these days seems to be purely on pre-ordering based on a few images and maybe the odd YouTube video, but nobody gets it into hand until about three months later, which isn't a different thing from however it was before. But the whole it's 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 become a lost art <laughs> going to the shops and 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 going to I, I remember the the distinct joy not even that long ago of going to Toys R Us in Medway near near where I am and um finding a full wave of uh Transformers Generation Deluxes or whichever ones they were at the time it was the the Scourge wave from a fair few years ago now when he was the flying wing but they had the whole wave in the shop and i was so excited and bought all of them even though i could definitely not afford it at the time um but i, I just don't find that now i go to toy shops but i very very rarely buy anything because if it's something i i, I want i would have pre-ordered it already and yeah. half the stuff doesn't even make it to the toy shops over here sad times but anyway let's go back to the positives <laughs> So 1998, we've got uh, the the two new sublines for uh, uh, Transformers Beast Wars was the Fusors and the Transmetals, which was lots of fun, uh, very interesting concepts. Um, and as we sort of mentioned in our previous episodes, we are focusing primarily on the Western releases of the Transformers. And although this is quite a thing during... G1, uh, it wasn't quite as diverse as it got later. I mean, we had pretty much skipped over um, a lot of the, the Japanese releases that have happened uh, recently uh, in the in like Master Force and and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but now we're getting onto things like Beast Wars Second uh, and things from there onwards. Uh, car robots, for example, in a couple of years. Um, and we're going to more or less ignore them. Not that we don't think that they're worth talking about. Quite the opposite. We think they're worth talking about so much that would probably dictate uh, an entire episode or two episodes to it. Um, but we can't actually uh, afford to do that. So uh, instead, we will be pretending, well, not pretending they don't exist, but not really talking about them too much. Uh, we have said Beast Wars Second happened. It has some absolutely <laughs> bonkers uh releases that get start to show up within the uh, beast wars second and uh, uh the the other later beast wars uh japanese line and they they, they stick all sorts of mash together g1 g2 uh bit of beast wars all sorts of fun stuff but again I'm not going to talk any more about that we're going to stick with beast wars as is it it, it, it's it's incarnation in uh, the, the Western sphere. Um, anything I've missed? Oh yes. Uh, so for the um, the cartoon this year, we had uh, season two, the end latter half of season two, and the uh, beginning of season three. Um, season two, much like season one, ended on a cliffhanger, and this one was a doozy. <laughs> <laughs> do, oh, yeah. <laughs> do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, that, this is this is the interest. But you know, we talked there about, at the beginning about um, you know we class ourselves as G one. That's that's trying. Beast Wars is G one. Well, yes, yes. <laughs> but Beast Wars is G one. Like Optimus Prime's in it. Like the real Optimus Prime. Um, and obviously, we're talking about the aspect of um, the the Beast Wars cast find the arc and. Beast Wars Megatron is determined to blow Optimus out the the water and kill him, and it's just a, such a crazy aspect of. You think about the three years, so we're at the point we're talking at the third season of the show, and we're going to have three versions of Optimus Primal having three toys and three, like it. it we when we first talked about Beast Wars, we talked about it keeping the cast small, and it still manages to do that, but still keeps. Let's give new gimmicks to give new toys to sell things in really clever ways. And, you know, we, we saw the characters appear so that the Transmetals appeared at the start of season two. Um, 
And then in this one, we kind of see the kind of third versions of them. Um, uh, you know, transmittals two, uh, transmittal twos, and fusors and things like that. You see them kind of more come through. I love the end of season two and beginning of season three. I thought it was a great arc. Yeah. I thought the aspect of Optim, uh, Optimus Primal taking Prime, Optimus Prime's spark. Well, that's a tongue twister, isn't it? <laughs> uh, and that's what evolves him the next, the, the next phase of his story, um, I think, was fantastic. I thought it was a really good way to do it. Um, it just, it was a fun thing that, you know, you're 1997 when, you, you know, or sorry, 1988, I'm saying 1998, and you're bringing back to Optimus Prime. It's 14 years, like 14 years since Optimus Prime was first on the screens. So it's not as if it's huge. It's not like now, when they, if they were to bring something back now and tie it straight into G1, up, you know, Optimus or Megatron, we'd be blown away. You know, everything now is inspired by but that directly went, let's link it in. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was a really fun way to do it. You know, it obviously... The premise of the story for the beginning was that it was kind of tied in, but we it was almost like, is it? Because this is now going behind before 1984, yeah. time jumps, all these kind of bits. I didn't see it coming uh, no. when they when they kind of went for the arc. I thought it was a really good twist and just adds to what I, again, you know, for me, I think the Beast Wars cartoon is is right up there as one of the best. Um and I I I don't know how much more I can say that just doesn't tell me tell how much I absolutely love Beast Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, th- th- that whole uh, several parter that sort of cross between season one and uh, season two and season three. Um, it had everything. It had golden discs. It had Megatron being killed by Megatron. It had confirmation of the fact that the Beast Wars characters are absolutely tiny compared to their G one counterparts, which is always a bit weird to get your head around, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I suppose if they're supposed to be the same size as the animals they turn into, yeah. uh, that makes makes sense. Um, and you had Optimus Prime being, well, asleep at the Ark. Uh, a nice little dig from uh, uh, Primal about tie cast, which is uh, oh, yes, yes. such a great uh, little line. What is it? It's, 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 a, it's lost a lost art. art yeah. like oh. <laughs> Diecast oh, yeah. technology. It's a lost art. Um, and the arc, obviously, and you know, it tied directly into G1 and made you sort of really firmly go, oh, this is all the same continuity. This is all the same stuff. I mean, we'd seen Beg- uh, Unicron and we'd se- well, sort of seen Unicron and we'd had sort of yeah. talks of Autobots and Decepticons, but this, this was like, ah, yes, this is, this is still are Transformers. Um, And yeah, it's a great little story and it ends up with people getting new bodies as per the the, the, the way Um, and Optimal Optimus and uh, uh, did the Fusors come about at the same time? I forget Mm -hmm. if it's a direct result of what they do in that episode. I'm sure it is. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Um, Um, But not not all come straight away if I remember correctly. But yeah, uh, it, 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 it's a clearly a, a market employee to sell new toys and you know as we said throwing in gimmicks um, the Fusers gimmick is crazy wacky wonderful and like the other years there are some beautiful toys that never made it onto the, the um, show but there's also beautiful toys based on the show as well so um, I think it's a it's a great mix at this point where they've managed to not just do generic things off the screen, you know, and throw them on. Some of the, the Beast Wars fuser stuff are absolutely fantastic. And then, you know, one of my absolute favourite Transmetal toys is not based on a, a a character from the show. It's a, you know, it's a it's taking an original character and making a Transmetal, and it's just absolutely beautiful. And we'll talk about that when we get any of the kind of figures. But um, yeah, it's a great period. Um, as I say, I, I think the storytelling... Uh, Beast Wars is fantastic the way it arcs through. Each season had that peak. It starts off with a, you know, the fallout of the previous season and then leads into, you know, what does the, the end of this season look like? It's story arcs, you know, a lot bigger story arcs, a lot of things intertwining throughout. 
um, and calling back to previous episodes that we never saw in the original Transformers. You know, it certainly was written more. I mean, there's there is goofy bits, of course. There's goofy bits. It's yeah. Transformers. It's a kid show still, of course, but it certainly starts to have a bit more adult writing, um, and we, we see more of that as we, we go through the years. But yeah, the 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 show hits a peak at this point. I really enjoy the this this period. Yeah, I, I, I pretty much everything you've just said. It, it's having a, an overarching storyline and having a storyline that it it felt like it was thought out. It felt like the 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 insertion of the different types of uh, modes and the different gimmicks of the fusors and the transmetals and the, even the transmetals too it it didn't feel like it was a shoehorned in aspect of the uh, of the cartoon uh, it always felt like it was a logical progression of of, of the the way the story was going because they crafted the story around those rather than just had hey there's a new transform that's turned up and he's got different uh-huh. modes for some reason. Um, and then some of the characters that turn up who have the uh, the, the additional stuff that that's because that's when they arrived in the situation. So, but we'll get onto those in a minute. <laughs> so we'll go through the toys. Uh, we'll do this a little bit quicker than we normally do uh, and focus on the ones. There's that so many more, really. Are. So exactly. Many more. And it's only going to get worse as well. Just don't wait until we get to mini cons. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, we have the, the the classes again from uh, the previous years. So basic class this year were almost well, we're entirely uh, fusors. Uh, the fusor concept being you take one animal and you combine it with another animal <laughs> and it makes an animal. Um, some of them were a bit more weird and out there, and uh, some of them were a bit more. I don't know how to put it. Uh, didn't really make much of a difference. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for the Maximals, we had uh, Air Hammer, who was a shark and an eagle, and is very obviously weird <laughs> and and wonderful. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Don't get me wrong. I, I love it. again. Yeah. I, I'm I am such a uh, a fan of this stuff. Just the just. Uh, the basics, I said this with the first wave, the basics are so fun. Like, they're just, they're yeah. fun. Um, I, I don't know if there's more you can say about them, but being, for the price of them, yeah. they're a great wee toy, set of toys. Yeah. And yeah. they're not that expensive to pick up now. You know, it's not as if they're, they're crazy money. They're still fairly reasonable. You know, they're not the price they were when they first came out, but they're not expensive. Yeah. No, most of the beautiful stuff is actually pretty accessible. You can You can get it for reasonable prices which is lovely um so moving on we had bantor who was a mandrel or or, or a baboon uh with a what else was he with i mean he pretty much just looks like a an ape yeah with a lion maybe Remember. Yeah, maybe or maybe a tiger because he's orange. I forget. Yeah, I could have looked it up. I didn't. Uh, Buzzclaw, <laughs> who is a praying mantis crossed with a uh, lizard. Yeah, 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 some kind of lizard. But I mean, really, kind of just looks like a praying mantis with big feet. But that's fine. Uh, Noctoro, who <laughs> is a cross between a bat and a bull. Which <laughs> is amazing. Sorry, Noctoro is a, a maximal. Buzzclaw is a Predacon, I believe. Um, Noctoro, yeah, again, his his alt mode. He looks pretty much like a, a bat, uh, but with horns, which is fine. Um, I'm going to skip over one and just go to Terrogator, who was, well, a, a snapping turtle crossed with an alligator, I think. Yeah. Um, who really reminds me of uh, is it Tucker or Razor? Yeah, you know Tucker. I was thinking exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he he is he's he really very, does. Yeah, he's he's very he's very turtles because he's got kind of a bit of a leather head vibe, but he's also got. Yeah. Uh, which one's is it? Tucker was the uh, Razor was the 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 werewolfy one, I think. Yeah, I yeah, forget. I think you're right. But anyway, yeah. Just reminds me of that. Um, he's awesome. Um, and again, we've got these pictures from Transformer Land, so these ones don't have uh, bot mode, but that's fine. You can imagine 
or look them up yourselves. Easy peasy. And I can't remember why Terry Gator's legs are off in that picture, I assume. Uh, he was a bit uh, past for me. But the one I want to quickly talk about a little bit more in depth is Quick Strike because he's absolutely amazing and I love him. Oh, and shit. he's just oh, his character was great in the in in in, in the tune. Um, yeah. and he's he's a snake crossed with a scorpion. And he looks just like a scorpion, except for he's got a viper's head <laughs> on his tail. And it's amazing. And that becomes one of his arms. And ah, he's just awesome. And also great colouring. Beautiful, beautiful colouring. Yeah. Oh, oh, what a toy. What a toy. Absolutely amazing. Uh, let's move on to the... Uh, before you move on, oh, sorry. We, 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 talked about, we talked about gimmicks. But, I mean, uh, you can think about gimmicks for that one, so I, they've just made it like... I've gone for you, really, huh? really far. There we go. <laughs> you talk about gimmicks. <laughs> quick, strikes, uh, quick Strikes Tail, Shooting Water. Oh, of course, yes. I didn't even think so I, I totally for, I forgot about it until I was listening to the Triple Takeover, and I was like, how have I for how have has that slipped out of my mind that it, it's that it shoots water? Um, you know, what a toy that was for the, for it being a basic class to have the beautiful translucent bits in it, for it to be so posable, then have a gimmick like that. What an absolute stonker, you know. And uh, as you said, he was the only one actually like these six that appears in the show. Um, and he's by far the best of the six. Um, the others aren't, none of the rest of them are bad. They're all kind of fun toys. No, no, no. But Quick Strike is an absolute amazing toy for its say, uh, for its class. That's another thing about the gimmicks in Beast Wars, um, as well as them obviously transforming, and then you have the different series with the trans metals and everything else. Uh, the other gimmicks and stuff weren't really made a big thing about, like um, even original. Beast Wars Megatron, he squirted water out of his T-Rex head, but that mm-hmm. wasn't like his gimmick. That wasn't the be-all and end-all of his existence. It wasn't like some of the G1 yeah. ones that uh, their gimmick was basically all they were. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I really like that about um, uh, Beast Wars. Shall we move on to Deluxe now that I mm-hmm. ruined the PowerPoint? Oosh! <laughs> there we go. Uh, oh. Okay, so let's... Oh, this is... There, I'm just going to bask in their glory for a moment. There is some absolutely amazing toys in this line, but let's quickly go over the ones who are the upgraded versions of previous characters. So we've got Air Razor, Cheetor, Rat Trap, Rhinox, Tarantulas, Pterosaur, uh, and Waspinator are all. We'll go on to Dinobot in a second. Are all uh, new versions of uh, the, the 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 existing characters, which was really nice. And all of them are show characters, which is an no, interesting. Oh, well, they, they, all all, they, all they, of they, yeah, all of those ones, oh, yeah. all, all of the oh, yeah, basic yeah, transmetals yeah. are show characters. Pterosaur never got his transmetal mode in the cartoon, I believe. No. He no. got fried did instead. Waspinator, and he did Waspinator. Um, and neither did Rhinox. And neither did Air Razor. Yeah. yeah. So, so they, they obviously decided on which characters to do this to based on the ones that uh, were in the show because there's no other uh, previous range characters have the Transmetal uh, gimmick uh, uh, done to them, not at this class. Um, obviously, Fusors were new characters anyway, uh, and Silverbolt was obviously a mainstay of the show, and Ah, oh, just one of the best toys ever. I absolutely oh, love him. Oh, Silverbolt him is my genuinely. Yeah, I, I like it's so hard. Like I said it um, the, in the very first episode, this is the that this is when I was sitting planning out and we were chatting through the whole idea of this show. I I sat and picked out pretty much my favourite toys through the full forty years. And this was the hardest period because actually <laughs> I can sit again on this page and go, yep, him, 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 him. Um, and the bit that, that we talk about gimmicks, so like in this one, Silver Bolt's um, wings shooting out the, the his, yeah. um, new missiles, brilliant. Um, the Transmetal is one of my favourite bits. And again, just the right time, right nostalgia, but the Transmetals, for stuff that, that isn't talked about enough, the Transmetals having rub signs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, hidden away, 
it's not as if they're like G1 where it's hit. It's so obviously like so like cheetahs. I've got cheetah in hand just now. Um, you have to open his kind of wings up to go into his um flying mode. Um, mm. and, and I suppose that's another point we haven't said that, that each of the transmetals have a they have their robot mode, they have their beast mode, and then they have a vehicle mode and yeah. the rough. The, the, the triple changes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I never even thought about it. Jumping yeah. Changes. But yeah. <laughs> to have it, then a rub sign in them is just outstanding. That beautiful chrome, you know, they are prone. Some of them are, are very prone to chrome flaking, mm-hmm. but um, an amazing set of toys. And the there's not a bad one in them. They're all stunning. Like Waspinator upsets me that we never got them on the show. Yeah, in this form, but I'd love to see them. Waspinator's Transmetal is an absolute incredible toy. You know, tra- I, there's none of them bad. I, I say that and then think, well, oh, so is he, so is he, so is he. Track I, uh, robot too. I'm Just, not a fan of Pterosaur. There we go. That's one I don't. Oh like. man, it's, it's going to upset you because Pterosaur is one of my absolute favorites. <laughs> I think it's an amazing I, I, yeah. toy. Maybe it's because I haven't played with it enough. Um, let's have a quick go at the ones that aren't from the show. Uh, well, actually, no, let's touch on Dinobot. Yeah. Uh, Dinobot 2, although he's Transmetals 2 in in this. Uh, yeah. So he's actually more connected to next year's line than this year's line. Um, Dinobot has the best arc in uh the uh the the, the show uh his yes. turn from predacon to maximal and then where that heads in the show i'm not going to go into spoilers i've decided but um there's a episode that is done so well that it is genuinely heartbreaking <laughs> it, is. <laughs> it really is it really is um yeah so he's amazing. Uh, he's got some really good gimmicks in the toy, but uh, I think we'll touch a bit more on him next time. Uh, the Fusors, yep. they're all bonkers. Uh, they look amazing. The <laughs> it's, it's a piranha wasp. It's an iguana <laughs> thing. Um, and Torka, who's what? He's a bull and a... No, he's an elephant, isn't he? He's an elephant yeah. and a orca. Yeah. Brilliant. Bonkers. Who came up with these ideas? They're amazing and completely and utterly mental um, let's move on to mega class now uh oh, and ultra class for that matter mega class was just it's a uh, sort of going to voyager class now i suppose uh mm. maybe a little bit less uh sort of in between uh so you had transmetal megatron who was amazing he had the incredible ability to turn into a roller skating hoverboarding <laughs> Yes, gets out of his hips. Amazing, and it's the first. <laughs> it's the first uh, Beast Wars Megatron that has two hands. Yeah, because <laughs> he holds point, his point. tail yeah, rather yeah. than having it. Yeah, as his uh, actual tail. Be- beautiful um, colors on him. The purple on um, Transmetal Megatron so is gorgeous. And as telegraphed at the uh, beginning of season two, uh, Optimus Prime comes with. His own inbuilt in- space surfboard <laughs> because that's what you want <laughs> as a leader of oh. the, 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 the Maximals. Uh, Scavenger, who is almost Inferno, but not quite. Yeah. I have got less to say about him. He's uh, another ant, but not as good as Inferno. And that's that. And then we come to uh, <laughs> the Ultra Class, Depth Charge, and Rampage, who we are not going to talk about now for reasons. <laughs> 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 and finally, oh. it's Optimal Optimus. Um, he was, we've already spoken to him about, about him a little bit in the uh, uh, when we were talking about the show. Uh, he is what happened to Optimus Primal when he took upon the spark of the original Optimus Prime. Uh, he is absolutely glorious, huge, fun yeah. to pose. All of his fingers move, which is amazing for toys, even today, apart from third party ones. Um, he has what three, four modes. I mean, they're all there. Four Four modes, modes. four modes. Yeah, it's a little, they get a little dicey towards, well, to be completely honest, I don't really like any of his modes. 
apart from bot mode because the gorilla mode is really sh- squashed down just yeah just it's, a squash down it's just a bit shoddy and then the other two modes are questionable I think the, the I, what a fun toy! Like, oh, he's amazing! It, it is genuinely. I remember getting it. You've got missiles, you've got sounds, you've got chrome, like unbelievable amount of chrome. You've got the the armor kind of bits that pop off his wrists. It's just, it's, and it, I don't remember it being crazy money. Um, I remember getting it. And I was a student at the time, so it um, can't have been crazy money, but it was an experience and a half getting that. I, I remember seeing it on the shelf and being like, oh, oh I'm going to own this toy. It's outstanding. So good. I, I bought, right, so I bought him uh, in America uh, when I was on holiday on there in the uh, break between the first and second year at university. Uh, went with my not then wife and a couple of friends, um, and I bought Optimus Optimal. Opt- optimal optimus <laughs> <laughs> uh for my best mate uh because at that time he was collecting maximals and i was collecting predacons this is pre me getting very optimus primary uh but i bought him kept him in his box and brought him all the way back to the uk and gave him to him and then we had a good play but i also bought another figure uh when i was over there but we'll talk about that in a minute um and this is technically next year but it counts uh but yeah no he's a great figure he's amazing he's uh just does so much he's so much fun to play with they've brought out various different versions of him and the different versions of him that they've brought out since they're the same they do all the same stuff they haven't i don't think anyone has improved upon him the uh no. the recent Hab- hasbro release is the same uh, doesn't do anything different and um, some of the third party ones they're just either slightly upscaled or maybe a little bit more posable uh, but yeah. other than that it's just oh, such a good toy yeah. anyway the, the trans art the trans art when the colours on it are beautiful oh yeah um, it, it just takes it just tweaks it enough that it's similar to the, the original yeah, but it's its own thing in the same time. But uh, beautiful, beautiful. The original is just such a great toy for a figure that's, you know, so many years old. It's ridiculously <laughs> good still. It is. It, oh, it's 20, 26 years old. This figure, it's bonkers. I, uh, I think, having seen the toy before the episode where he gets created, because uh, I, I, I saw the the shows a lot later than than the toys, I didn't quite understand why he became orange. And also, it would have been nice if, as he took on the aspect of Optimus Prime, his uh, other alt modes were a little bit more G1 Prime. Right. But these are I agree with that. I agree very with that. minor niggles. Um, right. So that's that's it for the toys this year. Um, a nice bumper bumper crop. Uh, and all of them, I think there's no toys in that line that I would say, I don't like that, apart from Pterosaur I wasn't quite so keen on. But yeah. Anyway, let's move on to our top bots of the year. Moff. Wait, I'm sure does the boss. slides in. Is it me first? It is me first. <laughs> Rampage. You could probably guess who we're going to pick because we've missed them out so far. Again, I bought this in America. I know exactly where and when I bought him. And I played with him so much. I got him straight out of the box on the... Uh, 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 Greyhound coach between New York and Philadelphia and was playing with him whilst we were subjected to Cutthroat Island on a giant TV. Why giant TV, tiny TV, doesn't matter. Um, he is such a fun figure. He uh, he he looks amazing. He's got a, a core robot that is super posable. He's got this gigantic backpack of legs that's just wicked uh his weapon is an automatically firing three-prong gatling missile launcher which also fires when you have him in uh tank mode his crab <laughs> mode is oh, it's just huge it's imposing it looks amazing and those claws are awesome and he's got a little grabby mouth um, and then his tank mode He's got a rubber tread that goes round oh, all of the wheels that are just sort of poking out all over the place in the other modes, but also subtly. Um, and it does go round 
<laughs> if you yes. get it on right, it yeah. does all go around and his missiles fire. Ah, you can talk about him more. And I won't because his character on the script, oh, his character on like, the show, like the the the, the part of uh, and I think at the end of the when we're going to next week's, we'll probably highlight some of our, hi- mm. our, our kind of highlights throughout the show. Um, but the arc between Protoform X to what obviously become Rampage and uh, Death Charge is just, I loved it. I we're going to have to move on to Death Charge them. right now. Yes. <laughs> oh, Death Charge is my favourite. Um, you know, it's the irony of this, us picking both the same class, but the opposite start toys. Yeah. I could have picked any, I could have picked a better toy. This is, one of my absolute favourite Beast Wars toys I have. This is the year where I have more, I am more complete on the year than any other. I am literally missing two toys from the, the full of this year's uh, toys. This is by far one of the absolute best. I showed it to my youngest the other day for the first time we transformed it, showed him the the um, the rub sign and we were kind of, he just was like, this is great fun. He had such a fun bit with it as we kind of gun that's a, a kind of small fish as well just beautiful the colours on them are just stunning the the other bit we never talked about with the transmetals that they have their name on them because in case they oh yeah they yeah oh, very GT very like, GT <laughs> it is isn't it it's weird um, but an absolute beautiful toy and a huge toy like really these these two the pictures don't do them justice for the colours for the chrome also for the size in hand, these things are outstanding and just fun to transform. Like, like all this line is just fun, 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 in my opinion. So much fun. Right. Well, that just about brings us to the end of this week's exciting journey through 1998. Uh, Death Charge and uh, Rampage, as we said, such amazing, fun toys. If you ever get a chance to pick them up or you've have them already just grab them off your shelf or go and buy one and just give them a little bit of a play i mean teth charge uh with his his disc launching amazingness and he carries a fish and his own tail as a weapon it's bad they're amazing but anyway wrap this up and um, thank you very very much for watching please do remember to like and subscribe and watch us every week if you haven't watched us on previous episodes go back and give them a look uh, and of course you can listen to us on your favourite podcast system so thank you very much I have been Odomus Prime and I've been playing time more thank you we will see you next time which is probably sooner than you think bye bye <laughs>